What makes a great entrepreneur? Uh, because obviously there's no magic answer to any of this. First thing is that you have to be a do doer. You just have to do. And most often people are trying to get things done. They want to prepare, they want to write plans, they want to talk about it. You just got to start before it's ready, before it's clean. It's going to be messy and you have to understand that. Number two, you can't listen to uh, the naysayers. Uh, there's going to be, every entrepreneur goes through that and that's the rite of passage. You can't listen to the negative naysayers. When you hear a naysayer, you go, great, you know, let me, let me hear that. And of course, you have to think of who that naysayer is. Uh, and what their experience is. If they've done what you're trying to do, then maybe you listen to them. If you're your husband or wife or someone in your family who's just nervous and doesn't want to see you fail. Um, three, uh, you have to give others without wanting anything in return. I love that doing that, like where you connect people, where you help, and really not want anything in return. And I've learned a lot over the years in terms of being a good leader and, and working with others. And in life, you can't control the weather, you can't control the stock market, you can't control uh, the politicians, you can't control your wife, your spouse, your, your boss, your employees. The only two things you can control is how you think and how you feel. Again, the only two things you can control is how you think and how you feel. And it's very empowering when you realize that because too often we think the challenges are in the outside world. But really it's all, it's, it's all in our head all the time. It's the self-defeating thoughts. And what's important about that, the second part of that is um, in terms of motivating uh, people who work for you, uh, I learned really off from that experience, you can't control people who work for you. And too often I would like have a conversation with someone and say, here, do this, do that, and here's how you can do it. And a week or two would go by and nothing would be done. And I say, you know what, maybe I said it wrong. Let me say it like this. And I, do it like this, do it great. I would talk like my dad, I would get all energetic. You have to, I can, I will, I must. And nothing would happen. Then somebody else would come to the company and I'd say, can you do this for me just the same way? Within a half hour or two hours, it would be done. And I said to myself, I didn't say anything different between the A and B, and that's when I realized that it had nothing to do with me. It had to do with their internal motivation to get it done. And that was a very empowering thing because once you realize that you're not motivating employees, they're motivating themselves. You're just setting up the parameters to, for their success. If you can keep that in mind on a regular basis, which is challenging, uh, it really helps uh, create the right environment. One of the things that's really helped me grow and I impart that to our, my employees is uh, either one working with a coach in one form or another because, like I said, too often you read a book, but once the book's over you really can't let that, generally after a few weeks it's gone and you move on. So you really need to be working with somebody on a regular basis. But the most important thing you can be doing, and everyone should be doing, is journaling on a daily basis. Um, I recommend Penzu. Mm -hmm. It's a free software for online journaling. Uh, also, Frame of Mind Coaching. Um, that was one of my coaches that I worked with. She has her own online journaling software, uh, which I recommend either or. It has been a game changer for me because too often you have so many thoughts in your head. If you don't put it on writing, uh, it, it's gone. And I have this saying, or that I was thinking of sort of bringing it up to our employees. It, if you don't bring in writing, we're fighting. Because too often people, will, they, they say, oh, here's my plan, here's what I want to do. But there's nothing written down. Within a week, it's not gonna happen because there's no structure behind it. And once you start writing, and the way I do it, because too often it's like, well, what do you journal about? The first thing I do is I just journal about what I did the day before. And as you're doing that, I'll be talking about, I had a great interview with Russell, we talked about this, this, and this. And all of a sudden, like four ideas pop in my head or four issues, and then I can kind of go on those tangents. And in a couple of years, which I have two and a half years of journaling, I have 400 pages that I printed out and I'm reading, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but you see a lot of the same things that you're feeling today, two years ago, and you realize, well, you've come far in some areas, you're the same stressed out person you were two years ago, and you forget that. And that's important because it gives that perspective.